What is up guys, Jarv here, back today, jumping into Destiny 2. Now in our video today, we're taking a look at the best exotics that are missing from Destiny 2. So if you want to trip down memory lane and discuss why these exotics haven't walked the corridors of time and made their transition over to Destiny 2, then this is the video for you. Now if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a rating down below, that super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new around here, want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. But without further delay, let's jump into the video. Now, since the launch of Destiny 2, we've seen many exotics be reprised over the years, and these can come in the form of normal world drops like Monte Carlo or exotic quests when you look at the last word or thorn. But ultimately, we're at a point now where there aren't many exotics left when we're looking at what can be returned from Destiny 1. So let's take a look at some of the best ones that aren't in the game currently and discuss in the comment section below exactly why that may be the case. So to kick us off, let's look at the Bones of Ao. So these were an exotic pair of boots for the Hunter, and they came with the exotic intrinsic perk, Not Bound by Law. And this simply upgraded your double jump with an additional jump. Now that sounds like a relatively simple addition, but that made them the go-to exotic inside PvE for a lot of Hunters. It made jump puzzles easy, and it allowed Hunters to reach areas that other classes could only dream about. Now inside PvP, they allowed Hunters an increased amount of mobility, similar to what we see nowadays with the Stompies, which may be a reason that Bones of Ao haven't made the transition from D1 into D2. However, with that all being said, I still firmly believe they are unique enough to make the transition back into D2. But let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are and whether these are an exotic that you'd like to see back in Destiny 2. Now, whilst on the subject of improved mobility, that brings us nicely onto our next exotic. And this comes in the form of Twilight Garrison. Now, this was an exotic chess piece for Titans that simply allowed them to evade whilst airborne. Now, when jumping back into Destiny 1, it was quite clear to see that there wasn't specifically an on-screen stated cooldown, but it certainly wasn't an ability that you could spam. And this paired really well with the Titan's ability to skate, which allowed them excellent mobility, especially inside Crucible. Now, taking a look at mobility for Titans inside Destiny 2, there aren't any specific exotics or subclass abilities that allow them to evade in this way. In fact, the evade mechanic has simply been added to the Warlock subclass tree. So pretty much every class of Guardian inside Destiny 2 has a evade mechanic with the exceptions of Titans currently. Now, could these make an infamous return to Destiny 2? Absolutely, there's nothing that this exotic offers that isn't already inside D2 as it currently stands. And with the nerf to Titan skating inside Destiny 2, I firmly believe this will provide a much needed improvement in mobility for them, as well as an EVE aid mechanic which is lacking from any subclass that they have. Now the next section we're going to cover off is exotic swords. I think it's really important to cover all three exotics from Destiny 1 that we don't currently have in Destiny 2. And these are Dark Drinker, Raze Lighter and the Bolt Caster. Now if we start off with the Dark Drinker, this came with the exotic intrinsic perk Supermassive Vortex, which allowed you to unleash a spiral void energy in all directions. And this is one of the most popular exotics out of all the swords that were available in Destiny 1. It became one of the go-to exotics to use in the Wrath of the Machine final encounter against Axis, which was really effective at dealing large amounts of damage within a short damage window. Now inside Destiny 2 we don't have Dark Drinker specifically, but we do have an exotic sword which performs a similar function, and this comes in the form of World Line Zero. Now in terms of similar function, we're talking specifically about the Tesseract perk. Now while sprinting, you can perform an area of effect attack, which has a similar animation to that of the Dark Drinker. Unfortunately for Destiny 2, swords aren't as effective as they were back in D1, so if this is a carbon copy of Dark Drinker, it is a shadow of its former self. Then we had the Bolt Caster, so this was an arc variant of the exotic sword and it had the exotic perk Sword of Thunder and this allowed you to shoot a beam of arc light from your sword creating a lingering electrical storm. Now whilst not as effective as Dark Drinker inside PvE in the terms of damage, it became a very fun exotic to use inside Crucible. And when we look at swords that can actually throw projectiles, we have a similar exotic already in Destiny 2, albeit void, called the Black Talon. Now the intrinsic exotic perk of this is Crow's Wings, which allows you to fire off a projectile cross combo. Now whilst the last two exotic swords aren't carbon copies of their former selves inside Destiny 2, there are similar variants already in existence, albeit with slight variations to the exotic intrinsic perk or the elemental affinity that they offer. Now the final exotic sword in Destiny 1 it was called the Raze Lighter. This had the exotic perk Phoenix Uppercut that allowed you to launch into a solar light uppercut attack. 
Now, Ray Slider itself was very effective against yellow bar enemies, allowing you to take out knights and captains very easily. It was good for clearing sections inside raids and was a good utility weapon all round. Now, inside Destiny 2, there isn't currently a solar sword, and Ray's Lighter itself has made a small appearance, and that was at the beginning of the Red War campaign, with the Ray's Lighter being on Lord Shaxx's back. So with some of the exotic swords having similar variants inside Destiny 2, we may not see all of them return in the future. However, Ray's Lighter is the standout unique out of all three, with no solar sword or similar abilities currently available from any exotic weapons inside Destiny 2. So moving on to the next weapon in our list, we have the Icebreaker. This was a solar energy sniper rifle and it came with the intrinsic perk No Backpack. So this weapon cannot be reloaded and it generates ammo over time. Alongside that, you had the exotic perk Icebreaker, where Icebreaker's victims spontaneously combust, dealing damage to others that are nearby. Now inside Destiny 2, there aren't any exotics that can refund ammo over time. In fact, it seems like Bungie is steering away from that direction entirely, as Invective is another weapon which would refund ammo automatically. The only weapon inside Destiny 2 which has a similar perk is Revoker, and this is a pinnacle weapon from Crucible itself. Now, Icebreaker would make major appearances inside Trials of Osiris, but it would also allow you to almost break encounters inside raids, allowing you to take unintended vantage points and choosing bosses from a distance. So with that all being said, is it likely that we'll see Icebreaker return, or in fact any weapon for that fact that can regenerate ammo over time inside Destiny 2? Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now the penultimate weapon in our video today is the Vex Mythoclast. This has the exotic perk Timeless Mythoclast, where this weapon has no charge time and it fires a single bolt with each trigger pull. Now this was available from the Vault of Glass raid as an RNG drop. So as you can see this is a very ornate weapon and it was a very powerful weapon when it first landed in the wild as it needed a nerf shortly afterwards as it was ruining Crucible with high damage and low timed kills. Now even after it was adjusted, it's still a very strong and unique weapon. And in fact with returning to the Black Garden with the Garden of Salvation raid, it was an excellent opportunity to reprise a weapon such as the Vex Mythoclast. Unfortunately that simply wasn't the case and I still firmly believe there is room inside Destiny 2 for this fantastic exotic. There's nothing in the game currently like it and I don't believe the perks or the abilities of this weapon would break the game in its current form. But be sure to let me know in the comment section guys what you think of this weapon. But the last but no means least weapon in our list today is the infamous Galahorn. Now this has a exotic perk called Wolfpack Rounds, where rounds fired from this weapon split into tracker cluster missiles upon detonation. Alongside that, it also had tracking on the main rocket, where shells fired with this weapon would also track their targets. As selectable perks, it had Quick Draw, Snapshot and Speed Reload. So although it was a rocket launcher, it was very light and agile and could hold at least two in the chamber as well. Now the original Galahorn was available entirely as an RNG drop initially, only available from Xur on week 2, so if you passed up on him, it was very difficult to get hold of Galahorn inside Destiny 1. It was later reprised towards the end, with the Iron Galahorn making a return as part of a quest line. Now as things stand, there is currently nothing like Galahorn inside Destiny 2. It is such a unique weapon in the way that it looks and the way that it plays, that it simply isn't something that you should replicate. Although there's no reason why this can't return inside the current sandbox. Now if we take a look at rocket launchers in Destiny 2 currently, the only one that is able to have more than one in the chamber is the Truth, and that particular exotic would have aggressive tracking, which is arguably more breakable inside the current sandbox than any perk that is available on the Galahorn. Now the two standout reasons why Galahorn was so good is its ease of use and its high damage and there's not many weapons inside Destiny 2 that meet both of those criterias. 1k voices is high damage although it is not as easy to use. I've blown myself up with it many times as I'm sure you'll probably relate to. Outside that though, are there any weapons that can come remotely close? Not really, not inside Destiny 2. Is there room inside the Destiny 2 sandbox for a weapon such as the Galahorn? I firmly believe so. Are we likely to see it though? The answer to that lies entirely with Bungie unfortunately. But let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this weapon. In fact any weapon that we've covered in this video today. Would you like to see any of these weapons return and would they fit inside the current sandbox? So be sure to sound off in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. So there we have it guys that's going to wrap up the video today. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have be sure to leave a rating down below that super helps me out here on the channel. And if you're new around here and want to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 content then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, but I will catch you all again very soon.